Hi, I'm Maria from Nancy's Notions, and today I'm going to talk to you about crazy quilting. I'm going to show you our crazy quilt template set, which includes a book and five different templates of various sizes to create your centers of your blocks. Crazy quilting first became popular back in the 1800s, but back then they would sew small pieces of fabric together of various styles with hand stitching and then embellish with embroidery stitching and beading and things like that. Today we've got these great templates that we're going to use to make that so much easier for you in today's sewing world. So before we make a block, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at how they're going to look when you get finished. If I first take this template A, the shape of it fits right over my center piece here. You can see that it's a slight bit smaller because of your seam allowance, not because I shrunk it, but this is a good size to start with. You'll see all these great fun shapes that show up as I build around the center of this block. Here's an example of template B in the center. I've got template C flipped upside down here, but it's way over here. It's off center, which is another great thing you can do with crazy quilt blocks. This is one of the easier ones, template D, and you can see you can use it this side up, or like I've done here, I flipped the piece over to give it another fun shape. And here I've got template E. It is the largest of my centers, which is nice so I don't have to stitch on quite as many strips to finish up my block. So for my demo today, I decided to start with template D because I like this shape and it's not terribly small. I'm going to cut myself a center out of the same fabric that I've done the other blocks with. And here you can see I've got some strips gathered. Now I took an easy way out and started with a jelly roll, but I know we all have lots of stash. You can head to your cupboards and your drawers and pull out fabrics that you like the look of together. They don't have to be from the same set because Crazy Quilting was all about using what they had and using it up. So go ahead and gather the stuff that you like and let's make a block. To get us started, I gathered some basic tools. I have my rotary cutter, a ruler, and my Ulta spinning rotary mat, which is gonna make it easy to cut various sides without having to actually flip my fabric all around. So here I've cut a piece of fabric for my center. It's a little bit bigger than my template, but it makes it easy to demonstrate. So I'm simply going to lay it on the fabric, take my rotary cutter, cut along the sides. Now instead of going under my arm and cutting here, I can simply spin my mat around and cut the other sides. I'm very comfortable going from right in front of me and away and across the top I almost never go underneath or on the left hand side because I don't get my rotary cutter lined up properly and I don't want to cut my arm. So that easy, I have a center trimmed and ready to get started. I've got my center and I've got my strips gathered. It's a very simple process of stitching to the center and pressing that fabric away and trimming up to clean up the edges. There's no set rule about where to begin. I like to start on a side that's next to one of the shortest ends, but you're gonna to have to do some experimenting on your own to see what you like the look of. For this first one, I'm gonna lay next to the side. I wanna make sure that this angle here, I'm still gonna have enough fabric on the strip to trim a clean line, which I'll show you in a minute, but this is where I would like to start. I've put my quarter inch foot onto my sewing machine and I've knocked that stitch down to a two for the length. And just like that, I've got my first strip sewn on. So one of my own pressing rules is I like to hit it like this first with the heat. It warms up the fabric and it sets the thread. And I take my fingers and do a finger press over, come back with the iron again, iron it one more time. I'm going to put my clapper on top of there to help suck some of the heat and the moisture out of there to give me an even flatter finish. I'm going to take my ruler and line it up along this straight edge of my center to trim off some of this bright green I just added on. I 
I am now going to add another strip onto this side and do the same process over and over again until I've created a surface large enough for the block size that I've chosen. Again, I'm gonna, now I'm going to line my ruler up on the strip that I already put on because I'm working my way counterclockwise around this center. Whatever line I created with the last strip is what I'm going to line the ruler up on. I like to work my way clockwise or counterclockwise around that center. Again, there's no rule about it, so you can go whichever way you like. You can also go across the center because this is a crazy quilt, so the rules of all other block assembly do not apply here. So after multiple repeats of stitching, flipping, and pressing, and trimming, here I've got a crazy looking block that needs to be squared up now. So now I want to get out one of my square rulers to make this squaring up process even easier. I'm going to lay the ruler right on to this crazy looking combination of strips and kind of audition what I see under the ruler. Do I want the center off center way over here? Do I want to try and get it in the center? As long as I've got enough strips added on so that they're jutting out from the outside edge, I am good to go. If you'd like, you can go back to your machine now and add some decorative stitching using decorative threads, which are from the embroidery collection or multicolored threads from your own sewing box. It doesn't matter what you add now. Again, it is your choice and your taste that's gonna show up in the decoration of this great block. Now that I've got blocks made, you can finish them however you desire. In the book, there are instructions for adding joining strips and borders and things to make a quilt like what's hanging on the wall behind me here. Here, I'm just going to show you an idea for layout. I've got all these different looking blocks. They all use the same fabrics. I've cut some strips out of the same fabric I used for my centers to show you what they would look like as sashing. In deciding what kind of fabrics you want to use, this is an example of what batiks would look like. The lovely thing about batiks is that it's hard to tell a right or wrong side. So if I accidentally flip one of my centers over or flip a strip over, it still looks the same because they're so similar on the front and the back side of the fabrics. Here's an example of what a pillow would look like with just one block and borders put around it. If you'll remember, this is my template letter C in the center there. These are all satins, but satins of different varieties. After this was assembled, we went back and did some decorative stitching right along those seam lines using different colored threads and different stitches, we get something that is going to look more similar to what the original Crazy Patch blocks may have looked like. This next one, I think you'll recognize, is made out of ties. So we started with that same template C in the middle there and added various pieces of ties. I can make them as large or as small as I want. As you can see behind me, I have blocks of multiple colors of silks and satins, so there's no end to the possibilities of creating. Where this block has more of a purple and blue theme, I have one that's greens and browns next to it. I have black satin put in between like sashing to join them all together. What a great collection to experiment with those stitches on your sewing machine and with those beautiful threads you maybe don't get to use very often. So by pulling out my book and template set, I have got a huge amount of blocks to experiment with. I can use the templates right side up. I can flip them over. I can add a quarter inch to them if I want them slightly bigger or knock off another edge if I want to. But this is an easy way to start, especially if you've never done a crazy quilt before. This gives you a combination of five different shapes to start with, adding strips, building out to the edge of your block, you're going to have a great time trying this out. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, hit the like button and comment below telling us what you think. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We encourage you to show us your completed project or tools in use. Feel free to post a photo on Instagram and use hashtag Nancy's Notions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Here I am! <laughs>
back in the 1800s. Great. <laughs> 